Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 15th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier came across an interesting Excel spreadsheet that used a couple new tricks in order to bypass anti-malware in particular being run in a sandbox and also signatures. Now, as far as the sandbox goes, this macro will not automatically run as the document is opened and some sandboxes rely on that happening. Instead, it actually has a button that the user needs to click called document review that will then kick off the macro. Now, the actual decryption of the malware only then happens as the user scrolls the document. And another little trick that's probably really meant uh, to uh, make it easier to create new documents as anti-malware vendors will come up with signatures is that it doesn't really store the malicious code in a certain range of cells. Instead, it just uses the XL cell type constants feature in order to enumerate all the cells with constants in them. And well, uh, that's where then the content of the actual malicious code is stored. So the attacker really can rearrange those constants at any time, use different uh, content of those individual cells. And uh, actually that content is pretty small. So really doesn't make a lot of sense to sort of have a signature on one individual cell. In the end, we get our normal downloader that will then download the next stage of the malware. Sadly, at the time when Xavier got a hold of the Excel spreadsheet, that domain did no longer resolve. It looks like we have at least one problem with last week's Microsoft updates and that appears to affect USB printers. Now, lots of different sort of forum posts and such about it. So a little bit hard to tell what exactly is happening here, but apparently one problem is if you reboot the system while the printer is unplugged or turned off, then you may actually end up with a system that no longer has a printer port. So make sure that the printer is turned on, I guess, uh, before you start Windows. And that uh, should for now fix the problem or you need to uninstall the cumulative patch that was released on Tuesday. Of course, remember there were a couple of critical issues like that SMB3 bug and such. So uh, be careful and really only uninstall it if you have some actual problems with the system. Network printing doesn't appear to be affected, so appears to only affect directly connected USB printers. And of course, there are a number of uh, websites out there that can be used uh, to exchange uh, notes uh, with uh, friends and others uh, privately. One of these sites is privnote.com that specializes in private encrypted messages that also self-destruct after they're being read. So pretty neat service and privnote.com works well, a uh, reputable uh, company overall, but uh, recently, according to Brian Krebs, uh, there has been a second website, privnotes.com. So they just added an S to the end of the domain name. And apparently they are now stealing and modifying notes being published via their system. So on the surface, it looks like privnote.com. But uh, once you use it and your note includes a Bitcoin address and the recipient of uh, the note has a different IP address than the sender, then the Bitcoin address is changed to a different address that then allegedly goes to briefnotes.com. So interesting scheme in that the site works uh, well otherwise, so a victim wouldn't really notice anything bad happening. Also, if you're checking your own notes, if you're still connecting from the same IP address, you would not notice how the note was altered. 
One subtle difference I noticed between Pref Note and Pref Notes is that the fake site uh, includes that ad free Pref Note in its uh, header. So I guess they claim that they're not displaying ads. Now, when I use Pref Note, I didn't actually see any ads either on the legitimate site. And today, Sans Fire starts all online. So typically when we have it at a real venue in the past, we sort of had a lot of handler related activities. This year, because it's all online, we have four different uh, talks that are open to everybody. So certainly uh, something that you wanna take advantage of. And today we have the four first one by uh, Boyan. He's going to talk about, well, the title of his talk, I is a bit misleading arcane web and mobile application vulnerabilities. He's really going to show us like some of the old vulnerabilities he's still finding in mobile applications and web applications and new ways to exploit them. So if you are doing a web application penetration testing, if you're looking to mobile applications or have to protect any of that, you certainly want to take a look at his talk. It's at 3.30, so in the afternoon Eastern time or 7.30 or 19.30 UTC. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.